Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazar of Chess Channel and welcome to a special series that we're starting today. With this video today we're starting our analysis with the black pieces, how to beat the Yobava London system. The Yobava London also is called sometimes the wrapper Yobava system uh, in which white is building this setup with the move knight to c3, d4 and bishop to f4. Is trying to play knight to b5, hit also uh, the weak pawn on c7 in an early state of the game. So many players I think are bothered by this opening. In my opinion, it's nothing spectacular what White is doing in the beginning. There are many, many opportunities that you can play. But I think the most important issue for Black is that White is playing many times the same setup, the same ideas. And it basically, it seems to you maybe that you cannot do anything about it. You cannot maybe change the direction of the opening because there are not so many sidelines that you can play. Basically, White is forcing you to go into his maybe opening preparation. But I wanted to also show you now many opportunities here for black so this will be now only our first video so it will be as i said a mini series if you have some questions if you have some uh suggestions that we should do some other sidelines please write it also in the comment section below we can do then a different sideline but today we're analyzing this particular setup as i said in which it seems maybe to you that you're running many times as i said into white opening preparation but there are many, many tactical opportunities. I wanted to show you here also some theoretical novelties uh, here that I've prepared with the Stockfish engine in which I think you can dismantle, destroy uh, really the Yubava London system with, with really, really cool tactics. So in my opinion, it will be a very important series here on my YouTube chess channel. So let's see what's all about. What are um, here the opportunities for black? Let's start from the beginning because first of all, let's see how this opening is happening from the beginning. So white opens with the d4 we're responding here with move knight to f6 and now f move knight to c3 um i wanted to also point you out we will do also special series special continuation about the accelerated london system but first of all we're starting with the normal knight to c3 preparation my recommendation is to meet this move with the move d5 not allowing of course white to break and enter with the move e4 now comes the um, um yobava london the rapport to yobava move with the move bishop to f4 and the preparation here is to play the move knight to b5 you could do maybe here the move e6 or something immediately but then probably you're getting hit with the move knight to b5 you have to play some strange moves like knight to a6 i'm not saying this is uh, bad or something for for black but this is a line that in my opinion leads into complications for black because in one particular moment you have to play c6 and then eventually you have to play c5 all of this is possible, all of this is playable, nothing wrong also, as I said, with the move knight to a6, but my, I myself, I'm a big fan of this particular line, and this is a line that I would suggest you to play the move a6. Simply not allowing this whole concept with the move knight to b5, but not only that, we're also preparing here immediately to hit the flanks with the move b5, and that's exactly what we're trying to do anyway, in, in the Yobava London system with the black pieces or in some other London systems because white, when white is playing, please pay good attention. So when white is playing the move knight to c3, he lost the privilege of playing the normal queen's gambit move c4. So that's why with our play against uh, white we're trying always to do this move c5 and we want to play b5 we want to play b4 we want to play c4 so we are uh, basically attacking the queen side white is simply relying later on some moves like knight to f3 knight to e5 and he will maybe try to create some flank attacks on this side of the board so that's why our move a6 is not only Please memorize this. It's not only a defensive move, it's also a beautiful attacking move because we are preparing the move b5. And then, as I said, we're trying c5, e6, knight to c3. We're trying to have a progressive plan on the queen side. So, as I said, there is a double function about this move because you see how important also now the move a6 is in the continuation of the game. So, let's see now first a plan for white. So, first, let's see normal stuff with knight to f3. My recommendation, uh, when the move knight to f3 happens it has to be a trigger for you it's a little bit different when he plays e3 if he plays e3 then i would not recommend you to play the move e6 that i re recommend you now we will see now in the continuation of the video also the e3 line it's really, really a different concept if he goes with knight to f3 then you can play e6 now you're liberating the long diagonal for the dark square bishop if he plays something like e3 my recommendation is immediately to play the move c5 now we're battling for the center and 
what should uh, white do? Many times, uh, white will continue with its move bishop to d3. Don't underestimate this move. It seems to you maybe uh, that this is nothing spectacular. He just played the uh, bishop's move, but his main concept is to play now the move e4. You should not forget about it. Many, many mistakes you can play already, because if you play now a call move like bishop to e7, the it's already already inaccurate because you had probably meet this idea B d takes d5 we play bishop to c5 he plays calcin calcin and now with the move e4 he white is a beautiful activity i'm not saying this is completely busted or something for black but uh, look at this all of the four minor pieces of whites are out he has secured the king by calcin you can maybe trade it off d takes e4 knight to e4 knight to e4 bishop to e4 you could maybe simplify the game by trading off the queens but i think this is not such a good position for black especially because of the fact that you cannot play b5 maybe play bishop to b7 because this bishop on e4 is very very dangerous so see bishop to e7 is all uh, not a, not a really good continuation what you could make maybe as a mistake also here many times i've seen it also is to play immediately the move b5 after something like kingside casting and knight from f to d7 uh, knight from b to d7 here the problem is now you could run into dirty tactics already move, with the move knight to b5. Uh, uh, bishop to b5 followed with knight to b5. So this is very, very, already very dangerous for black. I've seen this mistake many, many times. So this whole progressive concept on the queen side is not working immediately because the bishop on d3 was simply too too powerful look at it after knight to b5 uh, you can maybe play bishop to a6 but now knight to c7 is going to happen you have to play king to e7 look at this we can even play d takes c5 you cannot here pick up the rook because you're getting checkmated here on on d6 so it's game over uh, here for black for instance you try something like i don't know knight to c5 instead of this move bishop to f1 then uh, white will simply continue with look at this knight to d5 fourth threatening the fourth you can have maybe this resource king to d7 but now with b4 you're getting destroyed you pick up maybe this one but now look at this you're getting destroyed here on, on uh on c5 or maybe if you try uh, to step back with the knight then you get here queen to b5 so it's a devastating devastating position here for uh for black so as i said two main mistakes you could make in the beginning bishop to e7 or to play the move b5 b5 can be played but then you have to play c4 instead of this move knight from uh, b to d7 or another mistake that you could make it's a positional mistake and please do, don't do that is to play the move bishop to d6 if you play that then i think look at this after a couple of trades of bishops you, white is always continuing the game with a better life for bishop than yours your life for bishop is simply paralyzed blocked off by its own pawn structure so i think these are the three main mistakes bishop to e7 bishop to d6 or the immediate b5 when your opponent is playing the move bishop to d3 my recommendation is to play immediately the move c4 it seems strange to leave maybe here your opponent oh, opponent the opportunity to, to hit you then afterwards with the move e4 but now after bishop to e2 we can have immediately here an expansion on uh, on the queen side with the move b5 now white has to play something strange like a3 we can have this move now knight from uh, b to d7 we're controlling the e5 square and many times white will continue with the move knight to e5 but it doesn't matter look at this we have bishop to b7 we're controlling the c6 square and we have also great control of the e4 square because the knight the pawn and also the, the bishop are covering this important square in the center of the board black uh, could be challenged in this way king side casting but now we play progressively here rook to c8 bishop to h5 i've seen many times has been played for instance hitting the pawn on f7 but now we trade it off after knight to e5 bishop to e5 we can play uh, here bishop to um bishop to e7 or we could have also played here the move knight to d7 simply attacking immediately here uh the bishop but i think bishop to e7 is perfectly fine and then uh, simply kingside casting and ha black i think has a solid game so in my opinion good good continuation we can then co continue here after something like queen to e2 with bishop to c6 a5 b4 uh making our progress here on this side of the board so in my opinion nothing spectacular for instance if after uh here knight to e5 you play d takes e5 in order to get Get some spaces this is not good because uh, black will simply have this beautiful c5 square queen to b6 if you play e4 then d4 is going to happen so the pawns are rolling not a good continuation anymore for for white so as i said if your opponent plays here bishop to d3 meet this move with the move c4 but now 
things are getting very, very tricky. Let's see different opportunities here for white. White will play many times this concept. D takes C5. Now, of course, we take bishop to C5. But now he's trying bishop to D3 with a preparation to play the move E4. So it's tricky. Now pay good attention. Now the game becomes really, really spectacular. Now the game becomes really brutal. So now we haven't lost our tempo in the beginning, as I said, with the move bishop to E7. Then if that would have happened, then we would play, of course, with the same piece twice in the opening stage, which is not good. But now white is challenging you immediately with the move d takes c5, after bishop to c5 and bishop to d3. You don't have any more this pawn move c4 that we have seen was working uh, for black. Now, uh, my recommendation is immediately to play the move b5. Now you have to be really, really fast because white wants to play e4 immediately although both kings are in the center of the board but that was his plan in the beginning as i said don't underestimate this move e4 that he can play because he has already as i said four of his minor pieces already out so all of the minor pieces are so he has a good activity and now it's not a mistake i think to break and enter here immediately in the center of the board although both kings as i said are in the center but now look at this what's my suggestion this uh, move e4 has to be met now with a spectacular tactical sequence and this sequence you have to memorize really really by heart first of all we're playing the move b4 now when the knight comes on a4 my recommendation is to play this beautiful tactical shot bishop takes f2 after king to f2 now we play here d takes e4 but still you haven't solved all of the tactical problems here because after bishop to c4 you should not pick up the knight if you do that, then look at this. Queen to d8 is going to happen. King to d8. Now you have to uh, step back. Look at this. And now the rook is hanging. The bishop is hanging. Not a good continuation anymore here for, for black. So after move uh, b bishop to c4, you have to play bishop to d7. But now white is playing, of course, knight to e5. You should not again play here this kind of a move, bishop to a4, because after queen to d8, king to d8, the problem is now knight to f7, of course, is simply winning the game. Now, after a move bishop to d7 and knight to e5, my recommendation is to play here a tricky queen to c7. What should white do now? Bishop is hanging, also with threatening the move knight to c6. If he tries something like knight to g6 here in order to attack now the queen, then we can play simply queen to uh, c4. Uh, if, of course, something like, I don't know, knight takes h8 happens, then we can pick up the piece here, and in one moment I think this knight will be lost. What white could do in this particular position is, of course, to play the move knight to b6. But now we play queen to c6. And if he tries something like, I don't know, queen to d6, then we can play here a very beautiful move e3. Trying, of course, somehow to get the queen if he takes uh, here. Uh, if he plays e2, then, of course, the queen is coming into the game. Now, after something like h takes g6 and knight to a8, we have this one, queen to a8. And it seems so that maybe something went wrong here for, for black because... Uh, white is up the exchange, but it doesn't matter. Look at this. We play a calm king to e7. Probably white would continue with uh, king to uh, bishop to a7, hitting now uh, the pawn on e3, but we hit simply the weak c2 pawn. Now, after something like rook to c1, we can defend this position. Look at this. The bishop is coming into the game. Uh, we can play uh, here e2, and I guarantee you this pawn will be very, very unpleasant to handle for. Uh, for, for white. We have here also a 4 versus 2 majority on this side of the board. So basically we have a 5 versus 2 majority. Uh, maybe we're a little bit weaker here uh, on, on the queen side, but we have at least a great control of the c4 square. The engine gives here plus 2 evaluation in black's favor, all down the exchange, as I said, but we have many pawns as a compensation. So for instance, this uh, line is not working. So let's go back um, here. As we said, after move queen to c7 and the um, knight to g6 um, we can simply pick up the piece as i said after knight to b6 the most important part is here to retreat if of course you play something like this then we simply pick up this one if you pick up now this one as we said then uh, we can also pick up now the uh, knight uh, on b6 and in one moment probably this uh, this knight will be taken we have still a great control of the light course here on all over the board so this is not working so as i said um, let's go to the critical moment after move queen to c7 uh white should not play the move knight to g6 that's now obvious white has to play now the move bishop to b3 but now the brutal continuation continues look at this 
Uh, for bishop to b3, we have to play a tricky knight to c6. Again, white will probably try this move knight to g6, but now we play e5. We allow him to take now the rook, but now we play bishop to g4 first. We're getting the bishop out with a beautiful tempo. Many pieces are hanging. Your opponent has to now step back, and now we pick up here um, uh, the, pawn, uh, the bishop on f4. White could do now many things. For instance, bishop takes f7 is not so good because of a king to e7. Knight is hanging, also bishop is hanging. Probably he retreat, we simply pick up the knight and now we're continuing the game with a massive storm here with very, very unpleasant pawns to handle which are supported here by the knight, supported by the queen. The white's knight is simply misplaced here on the edge of the board. It's not a good continuation. The king is paralyzed here. Also, queen to a7, for instance, is a huge, huge uh, tactical threat. Uh, it's not working here for, for, uh, for white. So as I said, instead of this move, king, uh, bishop to f7, uh, white has to play here knight takes f7. Uh, simply trying to get the knight uh, into the game, but now we play a beautiful bishop to h7. So as I said, it gets a little bit messy here. You have to memorize this line because probably uh, your opponent will play something like this. So after bishop to h5, it seems so that your opponent can back get back into the game, but now you play this very, very unpleasant queen to h7. After king to f1, look at this. We have quartered now the rook. Uh, white's rook out of game and now we play a beautiful e3 simply putting more pressure here against uh, against uh, white king and now the huge stress is of course the move e2 e2 leads even into some checkmate possibility because in, if you don't want to get checkmate you have to even give up the queen it seems again so <clears throat> that um White can defend this position by playing the move knight to f3, but now we continue the pressure. We're trying somehow to attack this knight further. We're trying to play, as I said, the move e2. This is the way to go. Your opponent is probably trying rook to d1, but now we play knight to d4. Whatever happens, for instance, rook to d4, rook to d4, knight to d4, queen to d4, with the threat of e2, you could try knight to c5, but this is a game over. What you could try here, maybe, is to play the move bishop to c4, but now we continue the press. Look at this. Bishop to f3, g takes f3, queen to, uh, d, uh, queen to d7, threatening queen to h3. You have to play something like, I don't know, king to g2, but now we attack the piece. We attack also the pawn on f3. You could maybe try this one, but now with the rook to, uh, rook to d5, rook to g5, this is a huge threat. Your opponent could maybe sacrifice also the rook for the exchange, but also the knight is saying this is simply devastating. Uh, both of the knights are very, very powerful uh, in my opinion. Not a good continuation. Many, many tactical opportunities here for uh, for black. So as I said, this was now the line after potential d takes c5. Let's repeat it again. So bishop to c5, he's trying e4. We play b5. He's trying to break and enter b4 anyway. Knight to a4, bishop takes f2. e4. He's trying, as I said, to trade off the queen. You don't pick up the knight. We play bishop to d7. After knight to e5, queen to c7, knight to g5. As I said, can lead into this. Uh, knight to g6 here can lead into this line with queen to c4. So, uh, as I said, the best continuation after... Um, after queen to c7 is to play the move bishop to b3, but now we continue with knight to c6, and now we play this move e5, bishop to g4. Uh, we have now uh, d takes e, uh, uh, pardon me, e takes f4, bishop to f7 is not good. As we said, after king to e7, we play here knight to f7 for white's perspective, but now with bishop to h5. Many, many dirty ideas. As I said, the main goal is now to deliver check, push this pawn further, and uh, to play the move e2 so as i said this was now our preparation with this ideas to play bishop to d3 or to break and enter with the move e4 so early bishop to d3 has to be met with c4 if he plays d takes c5 you have seen now this other progressive line so let's see now different opportunities we're now in the same setup we're now again in the setup with the move a6 one of the many many ideas that white can play uh, is the aggressive idea with the move e3 so white is delaying the move knight to f3 don't underestimate this move because this move has a different different whole concept uh, uh here in mind because if you try to go into the standard lines that we have seen with the move e6 your opponent will probably hit you with the move g4 I'm not saying, again, this is completely busted because after something like, I don't know, uh, c5, g5 is going to happen, then you have to play knight to d7, knight to c6, b5, and similar stuff. Okay, 
it is playable has been played many times nothing wrong with that for instance vastly so play this line in top g element level it's played but my recommendation after move uh, here e3 that your opponent is playing so he's preparing this move g4 if you play e6 he will hit you with the move g4 my recommendation here instead of this move e6 now is to play b5 so so far we have a great grip around the square b uh, uh, g4 here so he cannot hit you immediately on the flanks at least we're delaying this move for a while he could maybe try here again this concept with the move bishop to d3 but now we play e6 when you hit you now when he hits you now now we can play the move h6 so we're not allowing here at least immediately to play the move g5 but now we can again play c5 after something a queen to f3 we can have here even the attack against the weak pawn on d4 so it's a little bit different because um because the whole concept with the move e4 is of course not working anymore uh we have uh, a beautiful attack against uh, the pawn on d4 so this is not working so your opponent could maybe try again this idea with d takes c5 but now again after um, knight to d7 you, he, could, he could try maybe this one bishop to d6 but now we hit this one after bishop to f8 rook to f8 this is again um, perfectly fine here for uh, for black so as i said what he could do here after move c5 he could hit you here on the flanks with the move g5 but now we can play again this idea c takes d4 look at this his knight is also hanging he could retreat but now with queen to a5 things are getting messy we can also occupy the e4 square uh so in my opinion nothing gained here also uh from uh, uh from white's perspective here he could try maybe bishop to e4 but this would be inaccurate because of d takes e4 queen to e4 look at this this light square bishop is coming into the game in a spectacular way both pieces are lined up now on the long diagonal many many tactical opportunities again uh here for uh for for black so look at this very important here concept so when he plays e3 we're playing b5 at least for a while we're preventing the move g4 now when bishop to d3 happens now we play e6 now when he plays g4 we can stop it for a while because if you allow immediately g4 uh, g5 here by uh, by white then it's not so good at least here on this uh, side of the board he's forced to play the move queen to f3 because he has to connect now the queen to the uh, rook because if he plays uh, g5 immediately this is not good because after h6 g5 of course the rook is hanged so he has to play now the move queen to f3 in order to connect now the piece but now the queen gets endangered with move knight to c6 so these are i think the two main progressive plans of white this early bishop to d3 that we have talked about in the beginning bishop to d3 or this concept with the move e3 in the beginning when he's trying to play progressively here with the move g4 so pay good attention when he's trying to do that so he's trying to trick you maybe in the beginning by playing different move orders he's trying maybe to trick you because he's hoping that you are playing the same move order but every move has to be met with your counter plan in my opinion with with the first move a6 here in the beginning you're perfectly fine but you should be careful what kind of a sideline is your opponent choosing in my opinion this is the way to go if he plays e3 that this has to be met with move b5 the move b5 would we would play in the beginning anyway uh so as i said now we're delaying just a little bit longer this move g4 for white he has to play different movers he has to play again something else if he plays of course knight of three in the beginning then we we're going into the standard line that we have seen before a, a e6 and then with the move c5 knight from b to d7 bishop to b7 if he plays as we said bishop to d3 probably will hit him again with the move c4 so you have a great expansion and again here on the queen side so as i said be careful with this e3 plan it's a little bit tricky because he could trick you into this early g4 line so okay these are the two concepts uh, that we have talked about today as i said this is just our first video about our play against the yobaba london system if uh, there are many if you, if there's different sidelines that bother you please uh, write it in the comment section below we'll try to cover it if you um if you have problems against particular sidelines and as i said in the continuation we'll do also our play against the accelerated london system but so far we have covered many also beautiful lines against the common london system here are some links of some videos please check it out you can have it uh, combined prepared against the standard ideas of the london system here are some links as i said and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel uh, see you soon with some more videos and what do we say
chat is the best, of course.